Hi, this is Jackie, also known as Junk Gal. And this is a reminder that God has blessed us with beautiful things in nature. Not just for our enjoyment, but it's a wellspring of inspiration in crafting materials. Embrace these gifts from Him and let your creativity flow. For in doing so, you honor the divine artist who lovingly crafted this world for us to explore and cherish. I went into the backyard and picked up these little twigs and what I'm making is a manger because today's project is to create an entire primitive nativity scene and I'm actually making two one for myself and one to sell for an upcoming craft show. So here I just have some twigs and you take a, a couple sizes. You have some small ones that are three inches and some larger ones that are five inches. And here I'm just making the cross part to hold the other branches to make the manger. And I'm just tying them off with some jute string. And then you'll put them together and you'll take one long piece and put in the center. And you can hot glue or you could just use regular glue. But I'm using hot glue today. And just put that in there. And then you'll hot glue the other side. And your manger is coming together. And there is our base. And then you'll just hot glue three pieces up the side on each side. And it just comes out so primitive and so adorable. I'm using a pattern to make the nativity scene with Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus. And the pattern is from Dusty Cupboard Prims on Etsy, and I will leave a link in the description box below if you want to purchase that pattern. I think you'll love it, and it was very easy to put together, and it will be so unique. Here I am painting Mary and I'm using a blue paint for her and again I'll leave the link to the pattern in the description box below if you would like to make this nativity. And I did uh, prim stain all of my pieces. And for Joseph, I painted his body brown. Or you could use a tan, whatever you prefer.
And here are all the pieces together. There's baby Jesus in the manger. And here is Joseph and Mary. It is a beautiful fall day here in central Wisconsin. So I thought I would take the opportunity to rip some barn boards for my primitive style wood stable for my nativity scene. And there's Emma. She's going to help me, I guess. My goal is to get these boards to six inches. Because my design that I have in my head, I think I can make a cute little stable with only six inch boards, different heights. But these boards needed to be trimmed down because they have different edges. The whole point of me showing you these clips of me using the saw is to show some encouragement. A few years ago, I would not use this saw. However, my husband works swing shift, so if I needed something cut or ripped, I needed to learn how to do it myself because he wasn't always available. So I encourage you, take one powered tool at a time and learn how that you can do it. I know you can do it because if I can, you can. Okay, just go for it. Just take safety precautions, wear your eye protection. If, you're, if you have to sand indoors like I do sometimes, wear your mask and eye protection. But I just encourage you to learn new skills and you will be amazed at how many things you can get accomplished and you'll be so proud of yourself. I know you can do it. I think I have come up with the perfect stable that I want to use. After ripping those boards down, I ripped them all at six inches. I cut one and a half back here to three inches, and I had one left over. I was going to do the tapered roof, but I thought 
that this would be really cute like this. And then Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus can sit in here. I'm going to put this together and then I will get you all of the measurements that I used for this. But I think that I'll be happy with this. And it's so rough. I think what I'll do is just a light sanding. And I may use my coffee stain on this just to maintain that barn board look. So easy. So we're going to end up with a stable that only uses five pieces of wood. The bottom piece is going to be 12 inches and I cut all mine to six to make it easy. One 12 inches by six inches, two 10 and a half inches by three inches, and two six inches by nine inches. And then this one was ten and a half inches by, should be three inches, it's a little short, but there you go. It, it doesn't matter as long as <laughs> the pieces all fit together and that it's, and that it is stable. It's a stable, so we want it to be stable, right? So I have two piles. And a star for each one. And I am, I am going to take this little piece off here. And then I'm going to flatten my star. I've got the star flattened, and then that'll go on the top of the stable. It's time to assemble our stable, and what I'm doing is I punched a hole in my stars like that and I went into my stash and I pulled out some of my rusty square head nails and what I have to do is they're going to be too long to go in like that so I will I just made a mark and then I'm going to cut it off My plan is to put the star on as such on this top piece and I'm going to drill a hole and glue this nail into that hole. Now before I attach those, I will go ahead and give this a quick sand with a fine grit uh, sandpaper. All right, this turned out so pretty. What I should probably do before I attach those is give everything a good sand and put on our coffee stain mixture so that that'll be done. And then I think we can assemble. I sanded everything down and this is so pretty I don't have a lot of this barn board left um, I'm getting low so I'm gonna have to find my guy who has tons of it and 
get some more. But anyway, we are ready to stain with our coffee mixture. And mine is about a quarter cup or the day, whatever I had made for coffee this morning. Those coffee grounds. Then I do a quarter cup of instant coffee. And then I fill it with vinegar. And then I had a steel wool pad in here, which I have removed. And the steel wool is 0000. zero, zero, zero. So let's see... And normally you won't see the results until it dries, but let's get one coat on here. I won't bore you with painting all of them, but hopefully it turns out really pretty. And you really never know what you're gonna get with the coffee stain. It just depends on the wood. But really what I'm looking to do is get this white part aged where I had to cut. And the ends, because we have to cut the ends. But it does darken it up and that's what I need. And that's all there is to it. I'll make a pile, then I'll take them outside to dry. When I come back, I'll show you the end result. But you can already see this is starting to darken and I really like that. The boards have finished drying after the coffee stain. And I just wanna show you a comparison. It really darkened up all sides. So that is fantastic. So now we can assemble our nativity stable. So we have a hole in each one of the front or the roof pieces. And we'll just place our star here. Look at this natural wood cracking. There's some nail holes. So rustic. We'll put a little glue into the hole and then we'll tap the little nail in there and our roof piece will be done. And all I did was just put a little dab of glue into the hole. I added the star and then I put the little nail in there. Now I'm going to fire up the nail gun and we can assemble this. And I just wanted to let you know that I'm making two, which is why we have all the boards. Because this nativity stable, you will only need five pieces. This is the base piece, and then we have two that will go on the side like this. On the sides, I'm going to allow three quarters of an inch. I am going to glue these two pieces, which are which is nine inches tall, I'm going to glue those and then clamp them together. And I'll get the clamps on that. I've got everything clamped, and now what I need to do is attach the bottom. The bottom or the floor of the stable is attached. And now it's time to attach the back piece. 
and that is easy peasy. You're just going to lay that on the back there. I'm just going to eyeball the center. Put some glue on. And there's the back. Grab a wet wipe. Get any of that glue that seeped out. Then we're ready for the top part. And I was thinking like that or that. I think what I'm going to do is instead of just on top add a little dimension and bring it down a half inch and tack some nails in there. See how this building process goes. And then I have to go back and write down all my notes of how I built it. But I like it. It's part of the creative process. So we'll see how that will work. I have to go get one of my primitive dolls and um, fit it in there and see how it works. Well, this happens sometimes. I have Mary in here. And if I go... If I bring it down a little, you won't be able to see Mary. Which is not good. We can't have that. I could go like that, but I'm not sure that I like that. Or I could bring it back here like this. And it does raise up a little. And then I have Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus. So I think the star will have to be in the back. Which is fine because I really like that too. Okay, that's what we're going to do. I will attach this piece to the back. And there we have it, our own stable. I'm going to put together the second one, and then I'll show you what it looks like all together. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. Thank you for crafting with me today and working in the workshop with me. And until the next video, God bless. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and smash that notification bell so that you never miss a video. And if you're returning, thank you so much. And if you have found value in this video, please like and comment.